بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Now this topic is very important It's very important We've been talking about the differences between Tawheed al-Rububiyya and Tawheed al-Uluhiyya Tawheed al-Uluhiyya means since we know that the Lord is one, the Creator is one, then we have to worship Him as one. In many times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the word Rabb to remind the people that they have approved this already. So since you know that He's the only Rabb, then He says, A ilahun ma'allah. Look at this. I want you, if you have a copy of the Quran, translation with you, to open uh, Surah An-Naml, Surah An-Naml, which is Surah number 27. It's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. I would also um, uh, appeal to the brothers that they should be switching, not to switch out the phone, but put it on silent mode. And I'm... Inshallah, that's what I did for my, for my own, um, also my phone, Jazakallah khairan. So we won't be disturbed. Tayyip. Now, I want you to read this with me. Um, <coughs> Why I don't have this in English? Hold on a second, please. Jazakallah khairan. Okay. So we said, Surat an -Namil. I'm going to open it now. Uh, chapter number 27. Did we say 27, right? Yes. Uh, what is the number of the verses? Uh, uh, 59. 59. Can you see it clearly here or it's not easy? Maybe those who are close, they can see it. Okay, I'll, I'll, make, it, I'll make it bigger. I'll make it bigger for you. Is it clearer now? Okay, let's make it. Let's make it 150. Okay, now it's a bit clearer. Okay. Say Muhammad. قل الحمد لله وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى الله خير أما يشركون أمن خلق السماوات والأرض وأنزل لكم من السماء ماء فأنبتنا به حدائق ذات بهجة ما كان لكم أن تنبتوا شجرها أإله مع الله بل هم قوم يعدلون. Say, who is he? Other that means other than Allah, who created the heavens and the earth and sent down for you rain from the sky, causing to grow thereby gardens of joyful beauty, which you couldn't have grown the trees thereof. Is there another ilah with Allah? No, but most of them are unjust. So he's reminding them, who creates? Allah is the creator. So another God with Allah? Since you know that he is the creator only, a ilahum Allah, then you take another ilah with Allah. Note, as I told you, that those people did not Believe that there are two Rabs, two creators for the world. Never ever. Never ever. But what was their problem? To take someone for their help. That means he takes a person as ilah, he's clinging to him for his need and for his help, for his hardship, for his disaster, for his calamity. 
for his tragedy. That is taking him as ilah. Many people, Allahi, they don't know that. The problem, brothers, the tragedy, brothers and sisters, is that when they come to the world of Islam, those who did not know the truth about jahiliyyah, what is jahiliyyah? When you don't know the fact of jahiliyyah, you will be imitating the people of jahiliyyah without recognizing it. So first, who created? Then, ilahum ma'ala. The verses go like this, the same. أَمَّنْ جَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا وَجَعَلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا وَجَعَلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِيَ وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ حَاجِزًا أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ is there one another other than Allah who made the earth a stable ground and placed within it rivers and made for it firmly set mountains and placed between the two seas a barrier? Is there another ilah with Allah? But most of them know not. Amman that as if Allah is saying, I don't like sometimes, sometimes the English translation. It really cuts and bites some of the impression of the verse. أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُطَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَى Look what they say here. Is he not the best? No, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. أَمَّنْ Who's he other than Allah? And now he doesn't say other than Allah. But this is the meaning. Absolutely. Who is he other than Allah? Who responds to the desperate one when he calls upon him and removes evil and makes you inheritors of the earth. A'ilahun ma'Allah. Another God beside Allah. Little do you remember. That the verse how it goes. Who is creating? Who is descending? Who is giving you rain? Who is growing the trees? Who is... He's talking about... Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, Rububiyyah, Rububiyyah. Then he reminds them with Tawheed al-Uluhiyyah. This is the Quranic methodology upon which many people don't know. And there are people who give da'wah, yet they don't differentiate between the difference between Lord, Rabb, and Ilah, God. And even they don't, they say, for example, they go with the Christians who say, okay, you say Ilah in Arabic, we call him God in English. That's not true. God is a common name, is not a proper name. Look, I'll give you an example. Give me your, give, can I have your attention, please? There is a verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Let somebody translate it. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ there is no other God but Allah. Okay. Deity. Deity. Except Allah. Okay. There's another verse. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ إِلَّا إِلَٰهٌ وَاحِدٍ There's no deity except for the one true deity. See? There's difference. How can you give them the same translation? One it says, There is no other deity but Allah. The other verse, There is no deity, There is no other God, but the one God alone. So how come some, you know, some translators, they put here God and they put the other verse God. That's not, that's not fair. Because there, look, the differences we find in the Quran, they must give a meaning. The difference is meaningful. It's not the same. We have problem in these translations. Anyway. Taib. So now you understand the methodology. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them about what they do not deny. That he is the only Lord. Rabb. Then he gives the hujjah, the plea, the evidence against them by telling them, so why you believe that there is another God with Allah? Since you believe that the Rabb is only one. 
If you, if you understand that, brothers, Wallahi, that's a very good achievement. Because many people don't differentiate between God and Lord, Rabb and Ilah. And yet, they give da'wah. Now, the other evidence of differentiating between God and Lord, the Prophet ﷺ, when he became dominant in the peninsula, he used to be passing by villages. When he become known to every village in the peninsula that he is the Prophet, if there are some other villages who do not become Muslim yet, then they have to face punishment. He's a messenger of Allah. And he is the king of the peninsula, especially the last two years, three years of his period of prophethood. Who doesn't know about him? He used to, before Fajr, surround the village. If he hears Adhan, then he goes away and leave it. But if he does not hear Adhan, that means this is not a Muslim village. Then it has to be given warning. Either you become Muslim or you have three privileges. Or Islam, or the sword, or jizya. Choose. So he heard while he was surrounding a village, he heard the Mu'addin saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Ala al fitrah. That beats the natural disposition. Ala al fitrah. That's what the Prophet said. Then when he said, when the Mu'addin said, Shadu an la ilaha illallah. Then the Prophet said, Kharajta min al nar. This is Sahih Muslim. It's authentic. Look, first he said, Ala al fitra. When he said, Allahu Akbar, everybody knows that Allah is the greatest. Everybody knows. It's naturally known that Allah is the greatest. But afterwards, when he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, then the Prophet said, Kharajta min al nar. You have been ousted already from hellfire. Tell me now, why the Prophet didn't say to him, Kharajta min al nar, when he said, Allahu Akbar? Which makes it obvious that there, there is a difference between Rabb and Ilah. Tay. Now we come to the issue of, now I think we have covered this too much. We don't, we're not going to do more than that. We have here now, <coughs> The issue of the Allah's names and attributes. We call it Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. First, Tawheed al Rububiyya. Second, Tawheed al Uluhiyya. Thirdly, Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. Why do we call it? Okay, names and attributes, I understand. But why we call it the monotheism, Tawheed of the names and attributes? Why? Why it has to be? Is it a matter of Tawheed? I want to see your face. Ayo. Why we call it Tawheed al asma wa Sifat? The answer is, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm asking to, to answer. No problem. Uh, some people may say, why do I, I'm, why, you know why I'm addressing the question? Because some people address that question, you know, they criticize us and they say, why it has to be Tawheed al asma wa Sifat? Say asma wa Sifat, yes, but why Tawheed? I'll tell you why. When the Jews resemble Allah to the, to the creatures, to his creatures, is this shirk or not? And the shirk has something to do with what? Asma and sifat. So we have to negate them. We have to correct them. So our concept of the asma and sifat of Allah is a, is a matter of tawheed, while theirs is a matter of shirk. I will give you an example. I'll give you a, a very important example. I want you to open the Bible. <laughs> I mean, people usually they say these things. I want you to open the Bible. Where is that? Oh my God. No. Yes. In the Bible they say, where is it? Yeah. 
I lost it. I'm trying to find it. Where is it? No, I don't know. You found it? That's it. I've been looking for it, yes. Okay, it's uh, 32. And the Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the children of Israel. They shall take for them a lamb. You shall eat it with your loins girded. What's in your loins girded, brother? Like this. And your shoes on your feet. Don't eat it without having the shoes on your feet. And you shall eat it in haste. Like this. I, I don't know, what kind of revelation is this? For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses, a token, a sign, upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Now, did you understand anything of that? Forget about eating hastily, <coughs> voraciously. But what do we understand here? It has a problem regarding Allah's names and attributes. Did you realize it? Who can tell me? Yes? He said, put a sign on the door so I will verify that this is a Jewish house. It's not one of the people of, uh, of Pharaoh's house. What is that? Give me a sign, put a sign on the door. So I'll pass by, okay, when I see the sign, okay, that's... As if Allah is telling them, I don't know what's inside. I don't know who's inside. Isn't this a problem regarding Allah's names and attributes? Yes. This is how, for example, Wallahi, brothers, we hammer those people of falsehood in our Salafi way. I was debating with someone who was arrogantly speaking against Islam. Wallahi, arrogantly. And when I was talking about death, she said, Jesus was persecuted and died as a human being. But what happened to him happened through his human side, human nature. And she said to me, Jesus is 100% God, 100% man. I said, wait, let me clean my ears. It's fair to say 50% God, 50% man. But how can Jesus be 200s, 200%, 100% man, 100, I mean, come on. That's number one. Number two, if we argue about his nature, whether he has 50% divine nature and 50% human nature, forget about that. Tell me, when Jesus said, regarding the final hour, no one knows when it will occur. Neither the Son, nor the angels, but the Father alone. Tell me about his knowledge. The nature of his knowledge should not change if you're telling me that he has two, human na two, two, two dual natures. Human nature. He should not be ignorant about anything. You call him God? Suppose he took a human form, okay? But you can't tell me that when he took the human form he became ignorant. She said to me, you Muslims believe that God is unlimited, right? I said, yes. She said, so why don't you agree that since God, God's power is, is unlimited, he can become a human being? Did you receive that question before? Yes. What was your answer? In that which befits him. In that which befitting to him. He does that which is befitting to him. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, sort of, yes, yes. If he becomes a human being, what's the point of him being a God? Then he comes exactly the same as us. There is no difference between us and God. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now she's talking about limit, limitation. If he becomes human being, he becomes limited. So that's why we believe that God is unlimited. So if he's unlimited, 
We believe he's unlimited because that's why he should not become limited. When he becomes human being, he becomes limited. So the, the issue of names, of Allah's names and attributes about his sifat, it is contained within the subject of Tawheed. Right. Also, people say today, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Christians are pagans, but uh, the Jewish people are monotheists. They don't believe that God has a son. You know who say that? People who are expert in da'wah. You know what they said to me? I told them, but Allah quoted them saying that Uzair is the son of Allah. He said, but you know there's a problem in this. I said, what? He said, the Bible does not contain that. I said, forget about the Bible. Allah is telling me in my Quran that they said it. <coughs> Subhanallah. Allah is telling me that they said it. This is more accurate. Sometimes even our people of Dawah, they have a problem that they have, they have to learn how to deal with these matters. Anyway, so as you can see, brothers, this is in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, chapter 1, verse 13. This is a problem in their faith, in their belief. And also, another point which is very important. Okay, let's say that the Jews don't say that Allah has a son called Azra, Uzair. But they are mushrikeen also. Why? Uh, they believe that Allah's hand is tightened. He's stingy. Isn't this included in the matter of Allah's names and attributes? What did Allah say? Hmm? Who asked me about the, this verse before, two days ago? Where's the brother? I lost him. Hmm. Now, this, in this verse, Allah is saying, بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَان What does the mean of مَبْسُوطَتَان? Translation, his two hands are extended. They, they attributed to Allah one hand, and when Allah was refuting them, He, at, he proved to Himself two hands. Isn't this amazing? Allahu Akbar. Bye. That's number one. Number two, what does it mean his hands are extended just like that? No, it's not like that. Like what? He's talking about generosity. Why? He spends. So he's talking about what? The context, remember, remember our lecture about uh, the, context, uh, the context. So when we hear the word yum fiqh, he's spending, so that means it's talking about what? Let's find another verse in the Quran which has the same extended hands. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذِ الظَّالِمُونَ فِي غَمَرَاتِ الْمَوْتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ بَاسِطُوا أَيْدِيهِمْ Those wrongdoers in hell and the, and the angels are extending their hands, saying to them, huh? أَخْرِجُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Come on, get out or kill yourselves. So, what this extension of the hand is about? Generosity? Huh? Challenging. Come on, take your soul out. So, how did we distinguish between the two? And we said about Allah, that means generosity. And the other verse about the angels is not talking about generosity. Huh? The context. Imagine if someone will be taking the meaning of generosity and put it, refer it to the angels. Will he be muharrif of the book of Allah or not? He'll be a twister of the book of Allah. See? So, it is not enough, sufficient to say that the, the word has two meanings and I can select one of the two meanings I desire. No! The context will decide, not you. Not you and your majaz, metaphoric. Neither you nor your majaz can give the criterion and the judgment. It is the context itself. That's what I used to be doing with the, with the Christians. Because they have a lot of, of, a lot of these kinds of metaphoric, metaphoric, metaphoric. They always, because this metaphoric, 
is a good escape for them from your accusation. Did you experience that, brothers, when they say to you, always this is metaphoric, this is metaphoric? You know what I say to them? Okay. And the sonship of Jesus to God, take it as metaphoric also. They say, no, this is literal. Why this is literal, while the other one is metaphoric? You're twisting, you're playing games. And this should not be... Some people in the world of Islam, they do that. They twist Allah's names and attributes. Don't be surprised, you're coming to Islam. But there are people who inherited these sicknesses from Christianity and Judaism, as the Prophet ﷺ said. طيب. And also, what kind of Tawheed the Jews have when they say that Allah was tired and he took rest? It is true, for example, they don't say that, for example, let's say that they don't say that Allah has a son. They believe that he's one. But what kind of that one is, they're making him similar to his creatures. Put a sign for me, put a mark for me on the doors outside, so I can tell that this is a Jewish house, not a Pharaoh house. What, what kind of God is this? What kind of God when you say that he got tired and then he took rest after six days? He regretted. And he regretted many, many things. You know, some Christians said, the, 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 the text doesn't say he got tired. It, it does, not only get tired. تَعِبَ وَتَنَفَّسْ What does it mean? He took breast. And every, every attribute of Allah, even if, we, if, if, it, if, if it became similar in its form, it's not similar in its meaning. Do you remember what I said now? Tanafas? Tanafas? What's the meaning of Tanafas, brothers? Tanafas, Tanafas. Huh? To inhale. Right? <clears throat> okay. So if we use the word Tanafas for mankind, we know what it means. Right. Is mankind the only one who inhale? Well, Subhi Ida Tanafas. The morning inhaled. So does it mean that? The morning has the same similarity of humankind if the morning inhales? No. There is nothing, for, for example, Allah said that He is Ra'ufun Rahim. Ra'uf means kind, subtle. Rahim means merciful. Allah, towards His servants, He is Ra'uf, subtle, kind, Rahim, merciful. But he describes his Prophet Muhammad that he is Ra'uf and Rahim as well. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِبْتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَأُوف الرحيم. So Allah said about himself, he is Ra'uf and Rahim. And he said about his Prophet, he is what? Ra'uf and Rahim. But the mercy of the Prophet is not comparable to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? The word is the same, the form is the same. <laughs> Similarly, the issue of, for example, the fruits in Jannah. In Jannah there is banana, there are many fruits. Talh, I was reciting the verse today. وَطَلْحٍ مَنْدُودٍ Talh, Talh is the banana. But you don't know the word Talh, you know it as Moz in Arabic. <coughs> but Talh is banana. Here we have banana, and in Jannah there is banana. May Allah grant you that kind in Jannah. Are those two bananas, the banana of this life and the banana in Jannah, are they similar? They're not similar. No way, a big difference. But the form of the word, is the, the name is the same. But it doesn't mean if we have the same name, that means we become similar in actuality, in reality in meaning. This is an important rule. The other rule that I want you always to remember, and I'm going to write it in Arabic. <coughs> ya Allah. Laysa, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Kamithlihi shay. 
او كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير اوكي دو يو سي ات از كلير هاو دو يو ترانسليت ات ان انجلش ذير از nothing huh like unto him yet he is the huh all hearing all hearing all hearing huh and all seeing Is that right? Like that, right? Take a little while. Bye. There's nothing like unto him, yet he is the all hearing, all seeing. Is that clear to you, brothers? Bye. Can you see it clearly? Can you see it, brothers? What is the matter? This is a new laptop. I'm not used to it. Bye. I hope it's clear to you now. Look, brothers. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in yellow. But here I'm gonna put it in. Uh, let's say. Okay. You know why? I'll tell you why. When you ever deal with Allah's names and attributes, before you deal with them, remember the first thing. Laysa kamithlihi shay. We begin with that Allah began with. Imagine, for example, if I substitute it now, I take this and I put it here. Astaghfirullah, um, uh, it's only an example. Suppose, imagine the verse was revealed like this. It's incorrect. It's incorrect. Why? Do you know the, uh, do you know the uh, uh, <coughs> cleaning materials? Cleaning materials? Ajax? What else? Huh? What? Clorex, anything. Jeff, I was I was looking for the word Jeff. Laysa kamithli shay is just like the Jeff. It purifies your mind from any. This is antivirus, and that virus is the whispering of the devil. This is an antivirus. It blocks. The whispering of the devil from your mind. So it has to be before, not after. Hmm. Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. Uh oh. Yes. See? Laysa kamithlihi shay wa huwa samiyyu So we begin with this to make sure that we block the whispering of the devil. Because you know, if you don't, and you begin with the attribute of Allah, then there will be a problem. The issue will be like this. Allah, Samia Basir. He hears and he sees. Is he like us? So he has eyes like our eyes. He has ears like our ears, etc., etc. Who's speaking to you? You think that you're speaking to yourself while the devil is speaking to you. So the best way is we begin with this like Laysa Kamifihi Shay. There is nothing like unto him. This will be purifying the waswasa of the devil from you. So you have to begin with it. As I said, we begin with what Allah began. Then we say, wa huwa sami al basir. Alaykum salam. Isn't this important, brothers? Do you understand it now? Yes. Uh, also, as the brother said, that uh, they believe that Allah regrets, he cry, he claps. All of these things are mentioned in the Bible. He claps. And 
they also mentioned that Allah went down on earth, you know for what reason? To wrestle. To wrestle with Jacob. Oh my God. <sighs> to wrestle. You know, those Christians, when they see that, they say, yeah, that has a meaning. Uh, it's a uh, metaphoric. That means he was struggling with him. Struggling with him. Metaphoric? Okay, take the other verse. Metaphoric. Jesus is the Son of God. Metaphoric Son of God. No, 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 no. That has to be literal. You see, people follow their desires. Pick and choose. Pick and choose. It becomes pick and choose. That is why we don't allow these kinds of game, games to be played. played. <clears throat> and for example, the Christians ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the son, his father is the, you know, they call Allah is the father. And they make parts for Allah. وَجَعَلُوا لَهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ جُزْءًا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَكَفُورٌ مُّبِينٌ Wallahi, I love this verse. Wallahi, I love it. From the depth of my heart. And they have ascribed to Allah parts. They made parts. They added parts with Allah. Verily, mankind is, un, is, is obviously ungrateful. They added parts. And now, yes, they say, Jesus is the second part. And the Holy Ghost is the, sec is the third part. <clears throat> We're not going to discuss this. We don't care about that now. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relate to us their evil kind of ascribing what he says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Subhanahu, subhanallahi amma yasifun. Allah is exalted over what they at uh, uh, attribute to him or ascribe to him. Allah is high above what they attributed to him. So the matter of attributing uh, Allah's names and attributes and what you have to attribute to Allah is a matter of Tawheed. When those people didn't understand that, look, they say that he went down, he was, he was fighting and he said to the Jews, put a mark on the door so I will, I will know then that this is a Jewish house, it's not a, a Pharaoh house. How can people still believe? You know why they still believe in in Christianity <clears throat> because they have they have good social facilities for those who remain Christian if some brothers in the Philippines they convert to Islam and they want to work in Manila they go to some companies so they say to them what's your name my name is Abdul Rahman oh Abdul Rahman mm -hmm. sorry no more jobs Many people complain to me. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I mean, I know that. That's happened. Your name should be Ricardo Marcos. Yes. If this is, this is a good name, this is good. You can have a job. So, socially, people will be having a problem. Socially, nowadays, Christianity, people in, in Christianity, they are stronger. They are stronger than the world of Islam. You know, that is why Muslims should be strong. Because there are people who are waiting to become Muslims. If some people become Muslims now and they want to come here, what, what are you going to tell them? I want to come to Qatar, I want to become a Muslim. Yeah, but you know, it's almost a dream to have a visa to come to Qatar. It's not easy. It's not easy to come. To, so, so that is why the Muslims should be stronger. So their power over the disbelief will be attracting many people to become Muslims. Now, many people want to become Muslims, but they have many obstacles. They're not ready. They have financial problems. Where should they go? Where should they go? They can't. Anyway. That is why. That is why. It is not enough, for example, let's suppose a Christian said, I gave up my belief that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus is the Prophet of Allah. 
Okay? But uh, I still believe that I can ask Mary to help me or to be my mediator to Allah. Hmm? Do we say to him, you're Muslim already? We say, well, you, you made a step towards Islam. But still, this is not Islam. Because most of the type of shirk before, it has something to do, it had something to do with the, the issue of wasita, mediation, taking people as mediators between you and Allah. There is a verse, Surah Az-Zumar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءِ As for those who had taken for themselves ally apart from Allah, look what Allah said immediately, something Another subject entered here. Now he's quoting them immediately. Immediately. This is a great wisdom from Allah. As for those who took for themselves allies apart from Allah, illa We worship them not but to drive us nearer to Allah. So what is their type of shirk now? Do they believe that those mediators are gods? Yes. Creators? No. No. That's why in Mecca, they used to say, the mushrikeen, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِلَّا شَرِيكًا هُوَ لَكَ تَمْلِكُ هُوَ مَا مَلَكَ Did you get it? Here I am. Oh Allah, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, there is no partner with you except one partner which you owe him and you owe the thing he owes only one partner with you and you are the owner of that partner and that support what I said to you yesterday there is no cult on earth that believe that there are, there are two rubs and two creators of the world sharing in creation with Allah no one, no cult Another thing, so if they say that we take Mary as, you know, immediate, we ask her for our need, we say, still this is shirk. That is why, brothers, I want you to be with me here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ قال سبحانك ما يكون لي أن أقول ما ليس لي بحق إن كنت قلته فقد علمته تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك إنك أنت علام الغيوب I know I'm quoting this first but I feel in myself I don't want to stop it's beautiful very impressive. At the day of judgment, Allah will be saying to Isa alayhi salam, Did you say to the people, take me and my mother as gods beside Allah? Christians today, they quote this verse. Your Lord is lying, your God is, dying, is lying, you Muslims. He's claiming that we took Mary as God. We did not take Mary as God. We don't believe that Mary is God. So your Quran is making a lie. What is the answer? We say, it's based on your lack of understanding of the word ilah. When they ask Mary, saying to Mary, Oh Mary, the mother of God. Oh Mary, help me. I was asking an American soldier, why do you ask Mary? He said, she's a good woman. I said, I did not disagree with you about that. I know she's a good woman. And we Muslims believe that she's a good woman. But why do you ask her? Do you believe that she can hear you when you call her? He said, uh, uh, yeah. You know when they say, yeah, they're not sure. I know them. Because usually they say, yeah, yeah, amen, amen. So I said, all right, 
You said yes. What if many people in different places at the same time, they ask her, can she hear them? He said, uh, I would say yes. I say, what if we have today billions, two, three billions in the world? All of them are asking Mary from different places, but at the same time. Can she hear them all and give them their need all? Then he said, uh, I don't know. I said, why you doubted? If I ask you, what about God the Almighty in heaven? Does he hear us all? You will never be doubting. You will never be saying, I think so. See, they know that there's something wrong with them. So, yes, they have taken her as God when they asked her to be the mediator between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why there is a greatest verse in the Quran described by the Prophet Muhammad to be the greatest verse. What is it? Ayat? You know why? Uh, uh, why? Why is the best verse? What does it contain? Prohibition? Allowances? Asma wa sifat. That shows the significance and the importance of the subject. Because a verse which is described by the Prophet Muhammad to be the greatest verse ever in the Quran, it contains nothing but Allah's names and attributes. And furthermore, this verse is the strongest one against the devil. And the devil himself had to give a confession to Abu Hurairah when he was in trouble and he had to tell him something that will let Abu Hurairah you know, leave, him, leave him away. He said, I'll give you, I'll give you an, an important information. Would you let me free? Abu Hurairah said, yes. What is it? He said, when you ever sleep, when you take your sleep on your bed, recite Ayat al-Kursi, for there will be no devil that will ever dare to get close to you. Then after Abu Hurairah went to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet told him, Abu Hurairah, you know who you've been talking to since three days? That was the devil. And that has another, another story. The devil was, was trying to steal from the storage that Abu Hurairah was entrusted on. Why? Um, I can say because, you know, um, because people in Medina, mashallah, at that time, they used to say Bismillah before they enter, Bismillah before they eat, Bismillah before they drink, Bismillah before they sleep, Bismillah in everything. Um, I think that caused the devils there, especially in Medina, to be very poor. But not in New York City. New York City, mashallah, they eat with them, they sleep with them, they share with them their intercourses, their everything. Everything. And the Prophet ﷺ told us that when the person enters and says, Bismillah, then the devil will be saying, uh -oh, no more uh, lunch, lunch or uh, supper. No more dinner. No more, no more dinner. No more shelter. Nothing. So they suffered hardship. It was a righteous society, not like our society today. Anyway. And that is why I call Allahu Ahad. Huh? It equals huh? the third of the Quran. What does it contain? Allah's names and attributes. And one verse in the Quran, it is sufficient, this small verse in the Quran, it is sufficient to refute Christianity. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Christians say, Al walid huwa al mawlud. Yes, they say, huh? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And they used to say, as Jimmy Swagger said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. Begotten Son. Begotten Son. So the begotten and the begotten are one. While Allah said in Surah Qulu Allahu Ahad, in Ikhlas, sincerity, He said, Lam yalid wa lam yulad. A Christianity, well, yalid wa yulad. Yalid wa yulad. Because because the begetter and the begotten are one. That's what they say. So one verse in that smallest, smallest chapter in the Quran 
one verse of it is sufficient to refute Christianity from A to Z. Subhanallah, how great is Islam? Wallahi, Islam is a great religion. And by the way, if Islam did not come, if the Prophet Muhammad did not come, who was supposed to be correcting the false things in Christianity? Who? Hinduism? Buddhism? Who? Nothing. Once I had a Hindu person and a Filipino Christian person, they sat down, sat down before me and I was supposed to be giving them da'wah. Then I said to the Hindu, please tell me, what's your belief? He said, we believe, you know, in three, uh, Rama, Krishna, etc., etc., yes, and these three are one. The Christian said to me, excuse me, that's my belief in Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's, that's my belief. You're copying my faith. Look, you're talking about Trinity. I believe in the Trinity as well. They don't know that Trinity was existed in the ancient pagan religions. But despite the falsehood of the Old Testament, we never find any reference for Trinity in the Old Testament. Never. Even the word Trinity has no existence. How can essential Aqidah be in Christianity while we don't have even one word mentioned about this Aqidah, or this essential Aqidah in Christianity? The bottom, the center, the center doctrine, dogma in Christianity is the Trinity. Yet, it has no place ever, not even mentioned once in the Bible. So this subject is very important. We have three important rules regarding the names and attributes of Allah. First, we're not allowed to speak, indulge ourselves, involve ourselves in talking about Allah's names and attributes without knowledge. For all the ways of knowledge about Allah are blocked except what Allah revealed to us about Himself. This is a very beautiful rule. The way of Ahl Sunnah is to attribute to Allah what He attributed to Himself and what the Prophet Muhammad attributed to Him without adding or twisting or changing and they proceed it with Laysa Kamithlihi Shay. You just put Laysa Kamithlihi Shay and attribute to Allah what He attributed Himself, having no problem, no confusion, no hesitation. Now, can anyone count the names and attributes of Allah? How many names of Allah? Huh? 99. 99. Yeah, some people say to you, it is 99. What is the evidence? The evidence is in your hand. What? In your hand. Let me see. See, here is 18. Mantash. And here is 81. Count, count it, count it. Man. And this is Indian numbers. Those numbers are Indians. Those numbers are Indian. They're not Arabic. You know that what we call today Arabic numbers, those are Indians? The, Arab, the Arabians borrowed these numbers from India. I don't know if you know that. Maybe you're surprised. So they say, look here, 18, and here, 81. 81 plus 18, 99. Alhamdulillah, see, that's our doctrine. That's not true. سبحانك لا أحصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك I cannot count your due deserving attributes you know about your names and attributes more than what I know so that means so what does this mean then we're confused our sheikh is confusing us no I'm not confusing you I'll give you the solution for this it is true that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said Allah has 99 names upon which whoever memorized them and combined them, collect them, he will enter Jannah. So, so that means this can be used for the one who believes that Allah has 99 names. No, the Prophet is not saying 
This is the only names he has. There are 99 names of Allah that you need to know and to remember in terms of dealing with Allah. You're dealing with Allah. Those are the 99 names that you should be knowing about Allah. If you know them, if you practice upon them, collecting them, memorizing them, and then practicing upon them, then you will go to paradise. Some people say, Alhamdulillah, how easy it is to enter Jannah? 99 names, you memorize them? Khalas, Alhamdulillah, I'm waiting for Jannah. It's not true. It is not true. For example, that's why knowledge is very important. That is why, for example, you know that Allah is all hearing, all seeing. So you need to know about those two attributes of Allah. So when you want to do something wrong or to say something wrong, you'll be saying, oh, if I said something wrong, Allah is hearing me. So now you're remembering one of the 99 names of Allah that you need to know. Al-Basir, uh, if I do something wrong, Allah may be seeing me. I don't want Allah to see me, to find me where He uh, prohibited me. And to lose me where He ordered me. You know what that means? You may say, Sheikh is saying something strange. What does this? To find Allah, Allah, let me put it all capital. Allah should not lose you where he ordered you. For example, he ordered you to pray. He should not be losing you there. And Allah, uh, Allah should not find you where he prohibited you. Allah should not lose you where He ordered you, and Allah should not find you where He prohibited you. Does this make sense? If you did not understand it, raise your hand and tell me I did not understand. I'll repeat it to you. No problem. I can repeat it even ten times if you want. No problem. When oh? Don't expose me, Sheikh. Don't let people know that I don't know how to write in English. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. Yes. Uh, okay. Allah, for example, ordered you to come to the mosque to pray Salat al Dhuhr, for example, okay? He should not lose you where you're supposed, supposed to be found there, here. You should be at this place praying to Allah. And he should not find you where he prohibited you. For example, uh, you're going to some bad places. You should not be there. You, suppose, you should not be there. He, you should not be in these places. Why well, you should be in this? So you're supposed to be seen by Allah in the good place. Not to be seen by Allah in the wrong place. But how is he losing? This, this is an expression. It doesn't mean he lost you. That means he's saying, where is he? Oh. No. Okay? You should be there where he ordered you. And you should not be there where he prohibited you. Got it? No? Bye. Um, let's open page 32 now, please. Shall we take a break? Uh, brother... Uh, Shall we take a break now? Five. We'll take a break for five to ten minutes, inshallah. And then we continue. Five, four to five minutes, not more. Four to five minutes. Just stretch yourselves, walk if you want, but come back. The merits of Tawheed, I'll just uh, read quickly. It is simple belief, the merits of Tawheed. It is a simple belief free of complex doctrines and philosophies, untouched by secrets and mysteries. For mystery and guidance are words with two opposite meanings. 
Because some people say, this Trinity is mystery. Okay, you want to call it mystery, but it's not guidance. Because mystery is not guidance. It liberates man from the bondage of shirk, from the worship of created things beside Allah to worship the one uh, creator, Allah, who created them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, legislation, that means ruling, is not but for Allah. He has commanded that you worship none but Him. Turn the page, please, and go down to the last two verses. It's only an example, symbol, to show how uh, logic, how, how the Quran is call, uh, giving a call, uh, uh, a logical and emotional uh, uh, verses. Say, do you see what you invoke besides Allah? If Allah decided to harm me, could they remove his harm from me? Or if he wished me a mercy, could they hold his mercy back? Say, Allah is enough for me upon whom alone rely the dependence. Isn't this beautiful? قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِنْ أَرَادَنِي اللَّهُ إِنْ أَرَادَنِي اللَّهُ بِضُرٍ هَلْ هُنَّ كَاشِفَاتُ ضُرِّ أَوْ أَرَادَنِي بِرَحْمَةٍ هَلْ هُنَّ مُمْسِكَاتُ رَحْمَةٍ قُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ يَتَوَكُّلُ مُتَوَكُّلُ It's beautiful. In other words, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ عِبَادٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ and let them respond to you if you are truthful. Yes, we told the brothers to number them. We told them, yes, since yesterday. Oh, okay. Okay, well, sisters, we told, the brother, we told you yesterday to, to uh, number them. You will find a page, which is page number 32, where you find the first title up is written as Features of Tawheed. I hope, sister, you can find them, find that page. Features of Tawheed. This is supposed to be page number 32. Then we go to the next page, page 33, where we've been reciting the, those two verses. I hope the sisters found it. Did you find them, sisters, so we can... Uh, if you found them, throw another paper so we can, we can know, inshallah, that you are following with us. You're following up with us. Just give us confirmation. Or uh, use the number of the brother. They sent, okay. Okay. It's found? Yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Now we go to chapter, uh, page number 34. Where there's nothing needed now. Then we go to ver uh, page 35. We go down almost more than the half. We read, the Islamic creed is an indivisible, not invisible, indivisible whole made up of a series of doctrine, each linked to the other. Denial of any one of these constitutes become a denial of all of them. Okay? For example, those who say, we disbelieve in the second part of dhikr, sunnah, but we believe in the Quran, it is equal to Allah of denying all things. It is a denial of the Quran. Christians and Jews, I'm going to the next passage. Christians and Jews believe in part of Allah's revelation and they deny other parts. Muslim obliges himself to believe in the books that were revealed unto Moses and Jesus, we find neither the Christians nor the Jews believe in the Quran. Look the equation, the formula I give to the Christians. If you want to be a Jew, you must believe in Moses, you must believe in the Torah, but you should never believe in the Injil, you should never believe in Jesus, you should never believe in Quran, you should not believe in Muhammad. If you want to be a Christian, you must believe in the Torah, you must believe in Moses, you must believe in Jesus, you must believe in the Injil, you should never believe in Muhammad, you should never believe in the Quran. If you want to be a Muslim, you must believe in Moses, Torah, Jesus, Injil, Muhammad and the Quran. 
who is more tolerant? You, who talks about toler tolerance. Who's more tolerant? Who's more tolerant? We are more tolerant. We say to anyone, if you don't believe in Moses, you're kafir, you're not Muslim. We don't accept you. Go out. Do Christians say that? Christians cry to the Jews, please believe in Jesus. Jews say no. Please do that. Now the Christians are doing to us what the Jews are doing to them. Really? They're doing to us what the Jews are doing to them. Islam is a system, a series of constitution. You should never take one and reject one. And there's no bargaining with Allah. There's no bargaining. Even if all the people denied Islam, they all need Allah. Allah is in need of none because He created everything from nothing. Page number 36, the last part, which is the verse of the Quran. Those who disbelieve in Allah and His messengers and wish to, dis uh, to discriminate between Allah and His messengers, saying, we believe in some and disbelieve in, the, in others and wish to adopt a way between. Those are the truly disbelievers and we have prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment. They say we believe in some and we reject some. No bargaining with Allah. You need him. He doesn't need you. Page 37. The attitude of the Jews, the Jews, yeah, that's what I mentioned. Paul encouraged not to listen to the son of the concubine. Because, you know, their problem in Muhammad that he is the son of the concubine. Look what he says. For it's written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave and one by a free woman. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave and his son and her son. For the son of the slave shall never inherit with the son of the free woman. So brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Sometimes, you know, it, 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 it occurs to me to bring some passages from the Bible and send them to the uh, uh, Human Rights Watch. Really? Send them, look, 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 look. Son of the concubine should, should not inherit. What is this? Cast out the concubine and say, why? What is this? Anyway. Uh, 38. Absolute monotheism. The essence of Islam, in the middle passage, it was revealed to you and to those before you, if you should associate anything with Allah, your work will, would surely become worthless. And you would surely be among the losers. It's very important. وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ if you ever set up parties with Allah, your work will be worthless. What does it mean? Yani, uh, you have a lot of good work, but you committed shirk. You may be rewarded in life, but there is no portion of reward for you at the hereafter. <gasps> oh, Sheikh, that's too fussy. No, no, it's not too fussy. Let's see Abu Talib. Abu Talib was the best defender to the Prophet Muhammad He's the uncle of the Prophet Muhammad. He was defending him the utmost you can imagine. But the Prophet Muhammad, at the, at the last breath of this man, the Prophet was trying hard to prompt him, prompt him guidance, to let him become Muslim. At least to say, La ilaha illallah, one time before he died. Abu Talib was saying, if you want, I can say it, but I'll say it to please you, only. Subhanallah, I'll only say it to make you happy. You want to, make, you want to be happy? I'll make you happy. I'll say it for your sake. Subhanallah. Then Abu Jahl comes to the other side. Are you, wanna, are you gonna give up the belief of Abdul Muttalib, your, your grandfather, and the father of your tribe? 
and you follow this man? Then Abu Talib said the last words of his last breath. He said, Ana ala millati Abdul Muttalib. I follow the way of Abdul Muttalib. Then he died. Then the Prophet said, I'll seek forgiveness for you as long I will not be. Hmm? Huh? I will not be what? Prohibited. Or forbidden. Then a verse was revealed. مَا كَانَ لِلنَّبِيِّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَوْ كَانُوا أُولِي قُرْبَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ رَهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ It is not allowed to the Prophet or those who believe that they'll seek forgiveness for those who are mushrik. Even if they are their relatives, after it became clear to them that they are the people of Jaheem fire. Yes. And in, uh, the, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best thing that I and the prophets before me have ever said, La ilaha illallah. This is the significance of Tawheed. Uh, going to page 39, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the second passage, you can see it. So whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold with no break in it. Let's go down to the footnote, footnote number 41. The Arabic original reads Taghut, which has a much wider meaning than it's possible to give with one word in English. Taghut is any false object of worship. Any object of worship becomes Taghut. Such as idols, images, or other things that lead to tyranny and to exceeding the limits of decency. Whatever is worshipped beside or alongside Allah is Taghut. And whoever calls or commands people to worship others beside or alongside Allah is also a Taghut. طيب. The conditions of testimony, La ilaha illallah. Let's go with the passage of knowledge. Began with the word knowledge. We must seek to know the rights of this declaration of faith. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Know then that there is no God but Allah. No. So there is knowledge that is involved, contained in the verse. The last passage. Yes. So you should know what La ilaha illallah means. Because if you don't know, you'll be having a naive concept in this issue. As I mentioned yesterday to you, some people say, it's not a big deal, inshallah, inshallah. We have ton, we have our power, we have our capability. When the moment of death comes, we're going to say, la ilaha illallah, which will be the seal of... That's not true. Why? Look what Allah said in the last verse, down. Allah يثبت الله الذين آمنوا بالقول الثابت في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ويضل الله الظالمين ويفعل الله ما يشاء. Allah strengthens those who believe with a firm word in the present life and in the world to come, and Allah leads astray the evil doers, and Allah does what He will. We've been told by Shaykh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, he's a great scholar, mashaAllah, a great one, and I heard, it, I heard him saying this. There used to be a person who deals with riba, usury. They, they call it today interest. I'm not interested in that kind of interest. He used to be dealing with riba. He's a Muslim. At the moment of death, people started to say to him, Say, La ilaha illallah. You know, some people, they said, oh, stop bothering me. I mean, I'm saying, say, la ilaha illallah. I can't. Don't you see? I'm, I'm losing my breath. I'm dying. Don't disturb me. They couldn't say, la ilaha illallah. And that person who deals with riba, when they said to him, say, la ilaha illallah, he said, the 10 make 15. 10 make 15. 10. 
he kept saying, they're repeating, the 10 make 15, that means if I, if I uh, give loan, give a loan to someone, 10,000, I have to take it 15,000. And today the world which is influenced by the Jews will never accept Islam to rule, will be fought, <coughs> will be weakened, so it will not be ruling because one of the most important conditions is in Islam, don't take riba from people. You know why? Because riba will be causing people who encounter difficulty, it will be ending with them with tragedy, not only difficulty, tragedy. In my email, I always receive these emails. Are you debted? Do you need a loan? So I was writing to them, leave me alone. <laughs> Do you need a loan? Leave me alone. I don't want you and your interest. Why? Why is that? Because I know what it means. There are people who committed suicide after they were stuck with those kinds of people. Islam is looking for you people, for your benefit. There's no bargaining in Islam. Riba is haram. I know that some people will be, you know, give fatwa, modern kinds of fatwa. You know, there's a modern mufti today, he said, the bank is another system different than the interest system at the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, it has different system of decoration. There's lights, you know, alarm system, yeah. But this is the same thing. Take 10, give me 15. That's it. And if you fail to pay at the right time, no problem, no problem. Next year, the 15 become 30. And that's how it goes. Okay. So, Allah strengthens whom He will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Strengthens whom He will. He knows who deserves to be strengthened. So be seriously dealing with Allah. If you, lost kind that, if you lost that kind of seriousness with Allah, a danger may be falling in you. So be careful. You're dealing with Allah. You're not dealing with anyone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our faith, to become really God-fearing ones, because the God-fearing is a great matter. And from now I repeat on you brothers, when you come to the prayer, Stand before Allah as should be stood, as one should be standing before Allah. If you enhance and improve your prayer, you're becoming a different person. Wallahi. Ahsan al salah, tahsan al silah. Does this make sense? Did you understand? Ahsan al salah, improve your prayer. Tahsan al silah, the new relationship with Allah will be improved. Your contact, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is your procedure to Allah. This is the best way to become closer to Allah, closer and closer. Right. Next page, page number 40. The conditions, so we mentioned knowledge. Second, certainty and sureness of the truthfulness of La ilaha illallah. Next one, acceptance. That is to accept all its conditions. Third, sincerity. That is to pronounce the word La ilaha illallah with complete sincerity. Fourth or fifth, submission. This is to comply to the conditions of La ilaha illallah. To comply, to accept, to, us, to be ascertained, to be sincere. See how pure is the faith of Islam. Whoever professes that there is no God but Allah must then do what Allah has commanded the believers to do and refrain from what he has prohibited. The Prophet ﷺ said, there is no obedience to any creature but, uh, sorry, that which is disobedient to Allah, to the Creator. لا طاعة لمخلوق في معصية الخالق There is no obedience due to any created being if it consists, uh, if it contains within it, with it the disobedience of the Creator. 
No obedience for the created being if that obedience is in itself disobedient to Allah. For example, Allah said to you, don't drink the alcohol. Then somebody said, come on, obey me. I'm your father. Yes, you're my father. But uh, even if you're my father, I obey Allah more than you. When the obedience, when the disobedience to Allah will be a command given to you by anyone, you should not obey that person. Obey your father in the other things. But when he says to you, obey me in this, which is disobedient to Allah, you know. Now there is a hadith that we should, we should really contemplate. Many people, they, they, have, they, they become weakened in their dealing with, you know, many people, for example, they say, um, why, you grow, why you shave the beard? Oh, because my company said to me, we don't want to see that beard with you anymore. Shave it, or you lose your job. For example, and some people may please people in something which may become unpleasant to Allah and it may cause Allah's wrath and, ang and anger. Be careful. Look what the Prophet said here. The Prophet ﷺ also said, Whoever seeks Allah's pleasures despite the indignation of people will earn the pleasure of Allah and the pleasure of people. And whoever seeks to please people with something that rages Allah, Allah will earn displeasure. Uh, he will be uh, earning Allah's displeasure and Allah will let people be angry with him. I'll put it in a simple way. <laughs> Whoever pleases people with something that caused Allah to be angry with him, Allah will be angry with him and will cause people to be angry with him. And whoever seeks to please Allah with what may anger people, Allah will be happy with him and he will let people be pleased with him. Take this as a rule and be strong in faith. Never give up, never bargain. Show your confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't get weak. Con contradiction of faith, page number 40. Number one, a word of or disbelief. For example, you know, cursing, saying a bad word against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or saying smoothly, Allah has a son. That's contradiction of faith. Finish. Finish. No more iman. Eternally, eternally in hell. Small word. Second, an act of disbelief. An act of disbelief. For example, uh, slaughtering animals for the sake of this holy person. For example, this is an act of shirk. Should not be doing it. <clears throat> a dogmatic belief. This is uh, similar to it, almost similar. Number four, the denial of the divine names and attributes of Allah. Number five, the ignorance uh, and misunderstanding of the important meaning of La ilaha illallah. Such as some people, if you ask a Muslim of La ilaha illallah, they say there is no Lord but Allah. There is no creator but Allah. It's not true. It's not true to say there is no creator but Allah. Because it, this is true that Allah is the only creator. But this is, Allah is not talking here. When you say La ilaha illallah, that's not talk, talking about the one creator. He's talking about worshipping that one creator alone. Not only to say there is one creator. We know that. But this is not the real meaning of La ilaha illallah. The meaning of La ilaha illallah, no one deserves to be worshipped except Allah. Number six, the abandonment of La ilaha illallah. That means that is to turn away from Allah the Almighty. Number five, to be loyal to the enemies of Allah. Next page, please. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, you who have believed, do not make allies of a people with whom Allah has become angry with. Okay? Now that doesn't contradict, for example, the fact that there are some social love that occur. For example, you love your mother. Okay? You love your mother. And maybe she's not Muslim, she's Christian. Shouldn't you love her? This is a natural thing. And it, is, it has a tie. It has a tie. 
But when this love to your mother intercepts your love with Allah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the loving of Allah should influence, should be preferred than the loving of anything else. Page number 42. The signs of true devotion, sincere devotion of Allah. That is to devote your words, your deeds, and all of your strivings for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And they were not commanded except to worship Allah, sincere to Him, making their religion sincere to Him. Okay, number two, judging oneself by the law of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, those are truly the disbelievers. In other words, wrongdoers. In other words, deviantly disobedient. So we should be ruling with what, with the, with the constitution, the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, doesn't he know what those whom he created? Doesn't he know those whom he had created? And he is the subtle, the aware. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى The last passage, which is a verse, is it the judgment of jahiliyyah that they are seeking? But who's better judgment other than the judgment of Allah for a people who believe? Okay, page 43. Shirk of obedience to those who disobey Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they have taken as lords besides Allah their rabbis and their monks. They took them as lords. How come? Those rabbis and priests, they said they made things halal for them and they obeyed them, which are not halal. Other things, they made them haram, which are not haram, and they obeyed them in that. This is, their, this is the reason uh, that made them taking those priests as lords with Allah. Number three, love of Allah. This is another sign of true devotion. Love. Look. Look at me, please. Now, you tell me I love Allah. Right? Is there anyone who, say, who denies that he loves Allah? Is there anyone to say, no, I don't love? You can't. There's, there isn't. Okay. But you know, we also love music. Uh, we also love cigarettes. We also love women. We also love love. We have many things we love. We love Allah. But we love these things also. But you know the loving of these things have more influence on you. More than the influence of Allah's love. I'm not denying that you love Allah. But I'm accusing you that your love to Allah is so weak. To the extent that one, that one cigarette is more beloved to you than him. You know why? Because he said, I can't leave it. I can't leave it. And when he kisses, when he you know, sucks the cigarette, as if he is kissing his wife. <laughs> what is that? What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? So, look. The loving of Allah has a purpose. It's just like, it's, it's not like what this woman, you know, I, I think I told you about. When she said, Jesus loves you, Jesus loves you. I said to her, what about me? She said, yes, he loves you too. I said, well, I'm not Muslim. She said, even though, I said, okay, I'll, I'll remain Muslim. And he loves me. I'll remain Muslim. The concept of love in Islam is much different than the way those people propose it and, 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 and present it. What? This love will make you preferring what Allah loves over what your soul loves. Ibrahim was tested in what he loves. He was, dis he was deprived from having a son until he became 90 years old. Suddenly Allah granted him a son. And when he had a son, he was tested with that son. Slay your son. He saw it in the dream. And he was ready to obey Allah in anything, in everything. Not like our weak people. You'd say to him, stop smoking. I can't. 
I can't. Really, I tried. Wallahi, I tried. I can't. How happy is the devil to hear that? Oh, you see? He said he can. Mm, that means I'm influencing him. I'm controlling him. How happy the devil will be when he hears that. That you say, I can't. You know the Prophet told us that if you saw a bad dream, don't relate that bad dream to anyone. Because the devil will be proudly boasting, saying, I hammered him, he's afraid. You should not be telling anyone that, but if you saw a good dream, vision, then tell it to those whom you love. So why? This is a psychologic way to let the devil see that you are strong enough and these kinds of threatenings that you, see, you may see in your dream, it doesn't affect you. When you see a bad dream in the midst of the night, don't wake up and say, oh, where do I go? Um, I'm afraid. No, 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 no. Say, La ilaha illallah. Huh? La ilaha illallah. Remember Allah. Recite Ayat al-Kursi. Alhamdulillah. He wanted to harm you. If he could, he'll be harming you in your awake time. But he couldn't. He couldn't. So Allah confined his threatening to be only in the dream. Alhamdulillah. So therefore, the devil should not be seeing you saying, I can't stop the smoking, I can't stop looking at women, I can't, I can't, I can't. This is a confession to the devil. It will encourage the devil to double his efforts against you. So, here you can show me. We need a practical kind of love to Allah. That is, when you say, I love Allah, and when other things that your soul love intercept the loving of Allah, then it should be stopped for the sake of Allah and for the sake of loving Allah. And the more you love Allah, you'll be loving the brothers for the sake of Allah. The less love you have to Allah will let your love to your brothers in faith be less. That's very important. It's very important. So this is how you should know about what does it mean when you say, I love Allah? You love Allah, then you should not precede what your soul loves. As I said to you, the Prophet Ibrahim والسلام, was tested with the beloved son he was granted. Suddenly, he was ordered to slay his son and he was ready. And the son was ready. The son said, oh my father. He's giving advice. He's telling his father, oh my father, do what you're ordered to do. You'll find me, inshallah, patient. Don't worry, my father. Then Allah said, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا When both submitted to Allah, they passed the test. And how many among us, we fail in the test? And the only hope we have, Allah غفور Rahim. He doesn't need to punish us. He's all forgiving, all merciful. Come on. No. Yes, Allah is غفور Rahim. But Allah selects those whom He know they deserve. You may not be one of them. As if when you say that, as if you're saying, Allah will forgive me. Who told you? We return to the subject about how do you judge things about what Allah will be doing? Who told you? If you keep saying, I'm a sinner, Allah may punish me, that's better. Not to say, Allah ghafur rahim, He will forgive me, inshaAllah. No. Five, getting back. <coughs> Number three. Number three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And among people are some who take apart uh, from rivals, they, you know, they take apart from Allah things as rivals. They love them as they love Allah. But the believer's love is stronger to Allah. So loving something equal to the love of Allah is not acceptable, it's wrong, it's a mistake. Because always your love to Allah should be stronger, higher than loving anything else. Once Umar bin Khattab said to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Oh Prophet, you are more beloved to me than anything else except my soul. 
And the Prophet said, no, Ya Allah. You're not rich to be a believer until you love me more than everything and even more than your soul. Then Umar said, O oh Prophet, now you are more beloved to me than, than even my own soul. Then the Prophet said, now it is, O oh Umar. Now it is, it happened. So we should, as believers, love Allah and His Messenger more than loving anything else. If you don't have this, what will be bringing you out to fight for the sake of Allah when a call of jihad is given? If you love your children, your family, your house more than loving Allah, then this will be huh, detaining you, stacking you from going. You know, there's a man called Hanzala. He is Ghasilul Malaika. He was bathed by the angels. Why? He was, in, he was newly, huh? Newly wed, newly wed, Aris, and in Arabic we can call him Arus. In Arabic now, in the layman language of people, they say Aris for the male, Arus for the female. That's not true. Both are called Arus linguistically. So, Hamdullah was newly a new, newly married. And while he was enjoying his honeymoon, as they call it, a call for jihad was given. He stopped everything. And he was junub. And he joined the army. And he was killed. He got killed. So the Prophet ﷺ told his companions that, that now you don't need to bathe Hamdallah because now the angels are bathing him by themselves. So this is, what, what happened? This man has a great influence of belief in Allah and love to the extent that it became more beloved to him than staying with his new wife. That doesn't happen with us. If one of us wants to go to, to the mosque at Fajr, his wife says, come on, stay with me. All right, ya Allah. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, if, uh, page number 44. Faith is not complete until the Messenger of Allah is more dearer to a believer than his parents and his children and in need all people, etc. Uh, we, we covered this. Right. The need, uh, uh, next page, 45. The need of knowing the oneness of Allah, the matter of Tawheed. <coughs> Excuse me just for one second. Um, okay, uh, the need of knowing the oneness of Allah, ilm tawheed the knowledge of Tawheed, is more important than the food and the drink is more important because this is your salvation salvation is based on that knowing the true tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's very important tawheed is the un <coughs> uh, unalignable right of Allah upon his servants to worship him alone as we mentioned to you do you remember the hadith brothers the right of Allah upon his servants and the right of the servants upon Allah I think you know it. Okay. Um, let's read the, the verse in the middle. We sent never a messenger before you except that we revealed to him that there is no deity but me, so worship me. Okay. Uh, going to the next page. I think we covered that already. Okay. We have now page number 47. Two valuable rules. Those two valuable rules are contained in the last verse of Surah Al-Kahf. قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ يُوحَى إِلَيَّ أَنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهٌ وَاحِرٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُو لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا 
فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا Say, I am no more than a human being, the like of you. It has been revealed to me that your Lord is one God, uh, that your God is one God. So whoever hopes the meeting with Allah, with his Lord, then let him work a righteous work. Let's go let's make let's do righteous deeds and let him not set up partners partners with his Lord. Good deed and sincerity. How can the good deed be considered by Allah that it's good deed? Is anyone to answer? How can Ahsan now? How can the good deed be considered by Allah that's that it is a good deed to meet to to confirm to go in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet is that the only thing that's not enough sincerity to be done for the sake of Allah those are the two conditions of every work you do if one of them is missed the whole work will be cancelled Sincerity and it should be applying the Sunnah. It should meet with the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. Those are the two conditions of every work. And note here that the last 10 verses of Surah Al, Surah Al Kahf, the Prophet encouraged us to memorize them and to let our children memorize them. Not only the last 10, but also the first 10. The first 10 and the last 10 of Surah Al Kahf. They help much against the fitna of the Antichrist, the tribulation of the Dajjal, the Antichrist. And that last verse is very important. It shows the two conditions of every good deed. One condition is missed, the good deed becomes no more good deed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَدِمْنَا إِلَىٰ مَا عَمِلُوا مِنْ عَمَلٍ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا What does it mean? And we had come, the translator says, and we will. It, it means, yes, Allah is talking about the future, but in a, in a, in a past tense form. It is understood. So there's no, there's no need to say, he will. Because Allah mentioned it in the past. There's no confusion happens. He's talking about the future. Then that means after, after their deeds will be explored, then these deeds will be... So Allah said, we had come to what they have done of deeds and made them as a dispersed dust. <laughs> like this. Haba <coughs> and manthura. You see, sometimes if the sun enters through the window, you can see what usually you don't see. This is we call haba manthur. Small pieces that swim, right? To be scattering. This is the likeness of the of the deed that people do, which had not been for the sake of Allah, or which had not been done according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, page number uh, page number 48 have you passed by the have, be, have you been told about the story of the third the first three people who will be firstly touched by fire do you know them alim mujahid ghani the first people whom the fire will be touching are three people alim scholar mujahid a, fi- a, a, a warrior for the sake of allah and Ghani, a rich man. What is this? It's horrible. Why? The scholar will be brought forth. And he'll be asked, what have you done with the knowledge Allah has granted you? He'll be saying, oh Allah, I have sought the knowledge and I was spreading it for your sake. Then Allah who knows what occurs in the hearts of people, 
will be saying, liar, you lied. Then the angels will be saying, you lied. But wait a minute, let's stop here and ask ourselves, why the Prophet said that the angels will, will repeat what Allah said? Because the angels wrote that as a good deed, knowing not that it missed the first condition, which they have no access to, because they, they, the angels do not know what occurs in the hearts of the people. They wrote it as a good deed. But when Allah gave his judgment that you lied, you were not sincere in what you did, then the angels confirm proving Allah's truthfulness. When he said, lied, you lied, then the angel will be saying, you lied. Then it will be said to him, but you have lied. Inshallah. But you have spread the knowledge with the purpose of saying, Allah, he is a scholar. And they said it. You know what I mean? Oh, and they said it. That means you got your reward already from them. What kind of cheap price is this? Just to let people say, MashaAllah, he is a scholar. What a small price. Take him to hell. Take him to hell. This is Riyah. See how dangerous is Riyah? See how the Prophet was truthful when he said that I fear Riyah for you, about you, more than fearing the Dajjal if the Dajjal appeared among you. Then the Mujahid will be brought forth. What have you done with the power Allah granted you? Oh Allah, I've been fighting for your sake until I died and I got killed. Then Allah will say, you lied. The angels say, you lied. And Allah will say, but you've been fighting for the purpose of being said, MashaAllah, he's brave. And they said it. They said it, that means you got your prize. Now take him to hell. Third will be the same thing. The, uh, the rich person will be saying, Oh Allah, I collected the money and I was spreading the money for your sake. Then the answer will be, you lied. And the angel will say, you lied. And, and Allah will say, but you've been spreading the money, spending the money. So that people will say, MashaAllah, he is generous. And they said it, take him to hell. These people are the best quality of the society who are supposed to be the first people to enter Jannah. But what happened with them? They became the first, the first people who will be touched by hellfire because they missed the first condition of the good deed that is to be done for the sake of Allah. Let's go to page number 50. Believe in Allah. Is there a need to prove his existence? This is what we talking about before. Is there a need to prove Allah's existence? No need. If you want to debate with those people, don't let it take long. Because this is not what you're supposed to be de defending Allah for. Leave those people. Don't keep arguing with them. And some people say, MashaAllah, MashaAllah, we proved that Allah has existed. Well, what did you do? I mean, Abu Jahl used to believe that Allah has existed and he was kafir. No need. If this is important, essential, which people really need, some people don't know that there is a creator called God. Uh, they didn't know that there is a creator for the world. So they need, if, the, if, this, if there is really a need for that, why the Quran doesn't Discuss, discuss this issue with those atheists as he was discussing always with those pagan people. Why? You know why? The answer is this. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا شَهِدْنَا Have you heard of this verse before? Wait. Yes, uh, Surah Al-A'raf, verse 172. Wait. Al-A'raf, Al-A'raf, 
Yes. And mention when your Lord took from the children of Adam from their loins, their descendants, and made them testify of themselves, saying to them, Am I not your Lord? Am I your Lord? Then they said, Yes, we have testified. Who? Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> Including Marx and Lenin? Including Pharaoh? Yes. <laughs> Including all the atheists? They all said, Yes, you are our Lord. So, you see now, we can get this evidence from the Quran. Now those people know it, it's in them. Then Allah said, Lest you should say in the day of resurrection, indeed, we were of this unaware, we didn't know about that. Look, Allah is saying, don't say, as if he's saying to the, this is what I say to the atheist. Look at the day of judgment, don't say we didn't know that there's a creator. You know that. You know that. Or you lest, or lest you say, it was only that our fathers associated others in worship uh, with Allah before, and we were but descendants after them. Then would you destroy us for what the uh, falsifiers have done? Then Allah said, and thus do we explain detail the verses, so perhaps they will return. Did you understand anything from this, brothers? Can anyone tell me what did he understand from this? Hmm? Yes, brother? <coughs> the confession? Is that, is that correct? The confession of all creatures, all mankind, from the, since they were in the back of their father, Adam. Allah took his covenant on them. Am I your Lord? Am I not your Lord? They said, yes, truly you are. Including Marx, including all the atheists. So when I say to them, they have it inside their hearts, in their souls, I confidently believe that this is the case. But you know, mankind is a good actor. You know? How many among those who became Muslims before they used to be acting, pretending that, yeah, I believe truly in Jesus, He is my Lord and Savior. And after that, they became Muslims. And if you ask them, they say, we've been acting. But some Muslims, when they see them like this, they say, MashaAllah, they are very determining. They are very determined in their faith. No, 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 no. Allah described the disbelievers that they are drawn with doubts. Their hearts are filled with doubts. Look what Allah SWT said here, and they denied them, that means the sign. Allah is talking about Pharaoh and his followers. They denied them, that means the signs of Allah. Yet their souls acknowledged them out of injustice and oatiness. So see how was the end of the corruptors. biha. They denied it. But their hearts, their souls, Absolutely confessed it, acknowledged it. This is what we believe about those atheists that they deny something which their souls acknowledge. I have to stop here. Yes, uh, just one, one minute also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the second page, uh, 50, 51, or were they created of nothing or were they themselves the creators? Beautiful. You know, some, some, uh, I was questioned by a group of Chinese people. They said to me, who created you? I said, Allah. They said, who created Allah? The, you know, they, they asked me. So. And some people came to me, come to me and said, even three days before, the people asked me, how can we give an answer to this? You know what, uh, what was my answer? Look, if I ask you, if, you, if I answer you this question, then you should be asking, repeating the same question always. This is a question that has no beginning. And this, these kinds of questions are the questions, we call them in Arabic, مُعْضِل. Falsifying questions. 
questions that have problems. The very question has problem because if you say to me, who created Allah? I'll say, for example, uh, someone else created him, astaghfirullah, uh, which I don't believe. They will say, all right, who created that one? Who created Allah? Then if I say someone else created, then who created that, some, that else? A, that has no beginning. So I said to him, if you're going to ask me this, I'm going to ask you who's the creator of this. And then I said to him, does this question have a beginning? Then they laughed. This group of Chinese people, they said, no, we admit. I said, okay, now let me ask you a question. How do you describe the creator to be created? He is creator. You can't say the creator is created. He doesn't deserve to be creator if he is created. Does this end and solve the problem or not? Finish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and the proof is within your own selves, don't you see? Look at yourselves. Look at your belly. You know, if we were to bring your belly and to extend them, there'll be something like uh, one kilometer or even less. I don't know, more? Look at your eyes, the way you see. Don't you know that there's a reflection? There's a mirror, it's just something like a mirror. The sight will be going backward then you'll be able to see the full world. Don't you see yourself? Who created that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَخَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ خَلْقِ النَّاسِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ The creation of the heavens and the earth is ever greater than the creation of mankind, but most of mankind know not. In other words, مَا خَلْقُكُمْ وَلَا بَعْثُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا Allahu Akbar! The creation of all of you and the resurrection of all of you in Allah's power is nothing but like the creation and the resurrection of one soul. Allahu Akbar! How great is Allah! So, it is really ironic it is really uh, disappointing to hear in the time of knowledge people who are talking about the sudden creation. This is wallahi, this is the collapse of the knowledge to the ignorance in the, in, under the name of knowledge. This is the collapse, this is disastrous that in the time of knowledge, those people of knowledge who deny the religion, they say, the, the creation was created suddenly by, but by who? By who? No answer. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha la and astaghfir katura. I encourage you, inshallah, as I said, to, to carry on, since we can't make it, to carry on. This is only 80 pages of the book. I hope, inshallah, we can cooperate on reading the whole book and learning therefrom, insha'Allah ta'ala. Jazakumullahu khayran for your attendance. And now, okay, we're going to put forth the telephone number for the sisters. Sisters can see the number in case you forgot it. Three, which is 7. Where is the 7? 0, 7. I don't know why. 6507. Okay. The brothers, we're going to give their questions from the floor. Please keep the question to the point and um, try to make your questions based around the topics that the Sheikh was discussing, which is uh, we'll take the first question from the right hand There is one. If not, then from the left. If not, 
Then we have a question from the sisters. It says, is smoking permissible? Yes. Smoking is permissible. With the condition. With one condition, that before you smoke you say, Bismillah. <laughs> And after you finish it, you say, Alhamdulillah, that granted me this favor. You dare, you, you dare, do you dare to do so? You dare to do so? You know, if you do it, you'll be mocking Allah. So, if you don't do this, if you don't dare to do that, that means the answer, the fatwa about smoking is in yourself. You don't need me to give you an answer for that. So, okay, I'll say it's haram. Yes. Isn't it haram? Don't you complain why the Americans are supporting Israel? you supporting the Americans. And the Americans send what you support them to Israel. Hmm. And this, this package of smoking is more terrorist than Abu Sayyaf. Is more terrorist than those who are described, classified as terrorists. Because those terrorists those terrorists, if they kill, they'll be killing maybe, for example, 1,000 a year, 5,000 a year, 10,000 a year. But those Marlboro terrorists, they're killing every year at least 1 million, if not more. And they're collecting some, some grass, hashish, grass, grass, from the ground, roll it in a paper, and say to you, smoke, give us the money, go away. So it's haram. Does it contain vitamin? Vitamin C? Is there any vitamin C? Yeah, vitamin C A. Not vitamins. Vitamin C cancer, yes. So it's not allowed. It's haram. Wasting the money. You'll be asked by Allah about the money. How did he collect it? And how did he spend it? Furthermore, your children are more deserving for the money you're wasting and you're burning. Your children. And it's amazing, it's amazing that some people from Bangladesh, from India, they have very small salary. Sometimes something like 500 riyals, not more. And they spend half of it for smoking and the other half for themselves and their family. I don't know how much will remain for their family. Yeah. Sister asks a question, can you guide us to have, how to have more istiqama? Very good question. When you pray to Allah, let your prayer be significant. You should feel, you should feel the munaja, seclusion in your prayer. We have people who perform the prayer like robots. The way they perform the prayer like robots. They don't feel the seclusion. They don't feel the compassion. They don't feel the sweetness because the Prophet ﷺ said that the prayer was made to be the cool of the eye, the cool of my eye. That means the utmost pleasure and happiness in his prayer. Why don't we feel it? That's why we don't feel that uh, 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 uprightness. The center, the bottom line, the source of your uprightness can be achieved through this prayer to Allah. You should show more seriousness and more humility the moment you face Allah in your prayer. You stand before the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do that, that will be changing you. Wallahi, I guarantee it will be changed. You'll become a different person. The moment you feel that spirituality and humbleness Khushu'ah in your prayer. That will be changing you. Besides, keep remembering Allah. If you today complain that there are certain sins that you cannot stop, Wallahi, your prayer with khushu'ah, your continuous remembrance to Allah will stop it sooner or later. Take this initiative, start with it, and you'll find the difference. Inshallah. Uh, 
remind us of the importance of uh, and the value of praying in Jama in, in, in the masjid? The value of performing the prayer in Jama'at, yes, um, the, the, those mosques were built and there's a, there's a principle for building those mosques. If every person will be saying, I'll pray at my home, then we have lost the principle, the reason of building the mosques. And the Prophet ﷺ was about to let someone to lead the prayer. And then the Prophet will be, the Prophet will be going some places where he knows some people are performing the prayer in their houses. And he was about to think, he was thinking about burning this house and all what it contains. It is very essential, important to have because this is a society in itself. This is a tie of the Muslim society in itself. Wallahi. This is a great favor from Allah. How many people, they were in trouble and they were helped by their own brothers in many cases. So it is essential. And uh, the difference between a prayer being performed at home and being performed here there is something like 27 double reward than merely pe being performed in the houses. I was asking one person, why didn't you pray at home uh, in the mosque? He said, I have, I have reasons. I am exempted. I said, well, I know that women are exempted. They can't come to the mosque. They're not allowed to come to the mosque for a certain reason. Do you have the same, do you have the same reason? You have the same reason? Why don't you pray in the mosque? The Prophet ﷺ said, وَصَلُّوا فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ So pray in your houses. فَإِنَّ أَفْضَلَ صَلَاةِ الْمَرْءِ فِي بَيْتِهِ For the best prayer ever to be performed is the prayer in the house. إِلَّا الْمَكْتُوبَ Except the obligatory one. Except the obligatory one. And the Prophet said, don't let your houses be like graves. You should lighten it, illuminating it through the prayer. But not the obligatory. The obligatory one should be here. Okay. Uh, the question from the sisters. Um, it was mentioned a day or so ago in one of your lectures that you said that the Quran gives you a high. Please clarify that a bit more. Yes. First in your recitation, because of the Day of Judgment, it will be said to you, recite and get higher in grade as you used to recite in life. For your, for your highest achievement in paradise will go with the last verse you recite. And you feel that you belong to the upper world when you read the Quran because this Quran was revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what I mean. Unlike the understanding of getting high when you take drugs. That's yeah. Brother has a question there. Yes, please, brother. Pardon me? Three. They are Muslims? Yes. They worship Allah in three nights? Shabira? Huh? What is that Shabira? I don't know that. I, I don't know that. Maybe then the night, the, oh, the, 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 the middle night of Shaban and Rajab. No, this is innovation. And it's based on fabricated hadith. The hadith says 
when the half of Sha'ban will will be the half night, uh, the half day, 15th, that means 15th, then fast its day and keep praying in its night. That is fabricated. It's a light hadith. It's not correct hadith. Fabricated hadith. It has no basis. So we should not be performing any prayer and making any prayer, any performance of a worship to be significant if the Prophet did not tell us about that. If the Prophet, yes? He prayed in Ramadan, three days successively, three nights successively. He prayed in Pakistan and in India, you know, three nights. And every night he read, he recited 10 verses of the prayer, 10 verses of the prayer. So in three days, three nights, he completed the whole Quran. I think we mean this. No, 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 no. Since he's talking about the half of Shara. This is Shabina, huh? they call it Shabina. Ah, oh, this, this, is that what he said? Okay, ah, 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 ah. Oh, okay. Look, brother, specifying any type of worship in a certain time, okay, and claiming that this is a specific uh, type of worship, form of worship, uh, this is bid'ah because it is there's an open way there was a, there's an open way for worship at any moment it occurs to you to pray to Allah yes but we have specific type of worship that had been specified for us in a certain time such as for example we stand in Arafah at the ninth day of Dhul Hajjah if somebody says for example I'll spend the night in Arafah at the second day of the Hijjah, what do we say to him? This is innovation. Okay? This is innovation. So specifying a certain type of worship in a certain time, especially, to make it special in a certain time, which the Prophet did not specify for us, nor the companions, this is bid'ah innovation. And it will increase people to be more dis. It will, it will increase people to be more distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the ignorant people, we, we leave their matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're ignorant people. I don't know how to judge with them. Their matter is left with Allah. But if you ask me about this, I say, this is bid'ah. You're not allowed to specify any kind of worship. And give it a name, special name. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I. Zakallah, yeah, we'll stick to the rules inshallah. One from the brothers, one from the sisters. Thank you very much. Um, the sister is asking, can an unmarried woman go to make Hajj or Umrah with her family or friends or neighbors? Family, any yani, mahram? That's why I'm supposed to be understanding when she said family. If she's not allowed to do that, but if she did, her hajj is accepted. Yet she's making a sin. Because the condition of istita'a, capability for women, is to have mahram. If she has no mahram, that means she has no capability and she will be exempted. There's no blame on her. This is an important question about the sunnah. It says that in some places, sunnah is understood as if you do so then you will be rewarded, and if you don't, you will not be yani, punished. Can you please clarify this in the context of obedience to Allah and the Prophet? And then the questioner goes on to say, what about wearing garments below the ankle and keeping the beard? Is this sunnah as understood above? So there seems to be a confusion. Wearing the garment? No, the garments under the ankles. Uh, what the, why did you say garment? Garments. Uh, for women, you mean? For women, anyway, yes, okay. And, and keeping the beard also, is this a sunnah? Keeping the beard? Yes, yeah, so it's from a man. For the man. <laughs> yeah. uh, the word sunnah, when it's been used, uh, the word sunnah, when we utter it, sometimes we mean what is preferable but not obligatory. And sometimes we use it with the meaning of the methodology of the Prophet wasallam, the way, his way of worship. Okay, and these two usages are should be known, understood. Sometimes we use the word sunnah, okay, 
to the contrast of bid'ah as an opposite to the bid'ah for, for example if someone committed bid'ah we say to them give up your bid'ah and follow the way of the Prophet we don't mean by that what is advisable but not obligatory did you get it? the way of life, the way of worship Okay, and sometimes we use the word sunnah indicating what is not obligatory, what is advisable. Okay, now as for the matter of growing the beard, growing the beard is obligatory in Islam, it's not advisable. Okay, because the Prophet, وسلم, uh, because you understand that through the context as well, when the Prophet وسلم, prohibited. Uh, prohibited us to, to, to shave the beard and he said grow your beards he said also don't imitate the Jews and the Christians so some people say it's not wajib it's, it's sunnah no is it sunnah is it sunnah to oppose the Jews and the Christians in this is it makruh to obey the to, to look like the Jews and the Christians in uh, shaving the beard is it makru it is is it makru to uh, to uh, to copy the Christians and the Jews is it makru or it's muharram is it haram or makru as people say about cigarette they always say they they always remember the word makru so is it makru hated to to uh, to uh, uh, to copy Jews and Christians in their shaving of the beards, or it's haram. The Prophet said, "Don't be like the Jews and the Christians. Grow your beard." So, what do you understand from saying from the Prophet saying, "Don't be like the Jews and the Christians"? It means it's haram to be like them. In the context, we have this. This is a sign. This is an evidence. This is qarina that shaving the beard is haram. Some people may argue and say, well, today the Jews grow their beard. So we have to oppose them. <laughs> the answer is, not everything the Jews do, we should oppose them. Not in everything. If the Jews say God is one, we say, oh, let's oppose them, let's say God is three. No. Okay. The, we are ordered to this uh, to uh, to oppose the Jews because they oppose their prophets in what in growing the beard. The evidence when Musa got angry with his people after they worshipped the calf, and the moment he saw his brother Harun, what did he do to him? <laughs> So, if those among the Jews, now a days, they grow their beard, they're, they're now following Harun. Note here, that when the Prophet saw the Jews fasting the day of Ashura in Medina, he asked them, what is that day? They said, this is the day, this is a great day, this is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drowned Pharaoh and saved Musa and his people. Did the Prophet say, oppose them, don't fast? No. But he said, I, have, I am more deserving for that day than you. He fasted that day and he ordered people to fast it. So did he oppose the Jews here? So whenever we are told to oppose the Jews, we oppose the Jews in the thing they opposed their prophet in this. Not in everything. And uh, regarding uh, uh, the garment, the tobe should be uh, lengthened to the ankle. This is the command of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet said, "Ma asfal al kabeini fa fi nar." The Prophet said, "Ma asfal al kabeini fa fi nar." And even the Prophet ﷺ ordered a man who had his garment, if you call it, down beneath his ankle, he ordered him to repeat the prayer, even to repeat it, and that's authentic. Just to remind the brothers and sisters that the Sheikh will be doing the khutbah here at Fana tomorrow and you will also be giving time for your questions and answers after the khutbah tomorrow. So whatever we can't ask today, because we
we're going to take the last question now, inshallah, and we'll carry on tomorrow if you attend. The question from the sisters is, please explain which language was the Bible revealed in, and is that language still alive today? I'm the wrong person to be asked this question. But anyway, they say that uh, the Old Testament was written in, Aram in, in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Aramaic. Um, I don't know so far um, if it's true or not. But anyway, even those languages which we have today, the Greek, Aramaic and Hebrew, those are dead languages. That means even if we have the language today, it's much different than the language the Bible was written at that time. So we have no access to what had been written before. No access to. Is this a question?